Welcome to the car, guys, and welcome to this beautiful Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglia. You've been asking us to drive this car, and today, my friends, we are. And we have got the best of the best, a 2021 model year beauty. The great thing about driving this car now is that the new M3 is out, and this is still better. It looks better, it drives better, it's got better power. This is the Mac Daddy. So this week, it's time for you to ask yourself a serious question. Do you want a BMW M3 or would you like something a little bit more special? Today is another great car guys day because James, our friend who owns all the Alfa Romeo's has kindly lent us this resplendent blue Quadrifoglio with, if you shift yourself that way slightly, La. It's only done 4,000 miles. It's pretty much brand new. I am so excited about driving this car. I've wanted to drive one for literally ever. What do you think? Are you up for this? Are you excited about this? I've always been excited about the Quadrifoglio and it is no understatement to say that we have talked about buying one of these cars at least 10 times. <laughs> a, a week. We've watched the car. <laughs> come down in value so new price without options is about sixty-five thousand pounds chuck in a few options you're looking at least 70 75 we've watched them trickle down past 40 to round about the current level of 30 to 35 where they become almost impulse buys and we have oh, yeah. both wanted one of these cars an interesting car guys insider fact is that we did some of our early test footage with one of the early Quadrifoglio. So we have driven this car before, an early one, and that's where we started to practice the car guys. But today, it's one of the latest cars. All the niggles have been sorted. It's beautiful, it's rapid, it's powerful. It's everything you want from a super saloon. Boom. <laughs> Quick history of the Quadrifoglio, an important symbol found on many Alfa Romeo performance and race cars. Quadrifoglio literally means four leaves in Italian and the original green cloverleaf motif was painted on an Alfa RL driven by Ugo Sivocci in the 1923 Targa Florio, a race he was not tipped to win. Sivocci was so unlucky in racing, in fact, that he was known as Le Eterno Secundo, or Eternal Second. Through an extreme set of fortunate circumstances, however, he managed to win the Targo Florio, beating Antonio Ascari and a certain Enzo Ferrari. Ascari, who was winning the race, was disqualified right at the end when his team of mechanics jumped on the car and rode across the finish line with him. The Quadrifoglio was therefore considered lucky and remained on Sivocci's car until a bodywork paint issue meant that the symbol was not on his car at Monza and he was killed. Ever since then, it's been considered lucky to put the four-leaf clover on Alfa's best cars and the legend of the Quadrifoglio was born. So we are in this beautiful, quiet village of Curdford, which uh, it never is quiet when we are here as the car guys, because then if you can hear, we have uh, dual streaming action going on. I think the local streaming championships are in full effect. Let's talk about how this car looks. Now, it's quite old now. It's a good five years old, this design, and yet it's just beautiful. It's so nice, got lovely sweeping curves on it. And even the standard Julia is a pretty, pretty car. But this one takes it to the next level. I love these headlights just cutting through and that big Alfa Romeo grille, absolutely fabulous. We have the four leafed clover shields on the side, bit of carbon sticking outside. That is guaranteed to not exist for very long, is it? Let's be honest that is gonna get stuck on a curb somewhere and smashed because that sticks out further than the wheels. You can only get them in four door, but I think it really suits the shape. Right, here we are around the back of the car. We have a beautiful carbon fiber spoiler, which I am a big sucker for. Massive Alfa Romeo badge. Let's have a check inside and see how big the boot or trunk is. And actually, it's not bad. You can fit a decent number of bags in there it doesn't get cut into too much by the wheel arches and it's pretty much tall enough to be able to put one massive suitcase and maybe something thin on top. So it's not enormous, but it is decent enough for a family of four. You can probably get most of your bits in there. Oh, hang on a minute. Wait, there's no, there's, there's no button to close no. it. Is this a mistake? Is this a joke? No, you have to, it's a manual, manual, clo manual close. What? You have to, you have to pull it, Pull it, pull it down. With my arms? 
Uh, oh, I don't think not... you've... Have you got the strength? Oh, it's just not... Oh. oh. Yeah, you see. I can't... It's trouble with modern cars. Everything's button push these days. You're never having to... Uh, we have to drive it with a with the lid up. Oh, just no. leave it. Leave it. Let's have a look underneath the uh, bonnet. I know there's not a lot to see on modern cars, but we like to give you a little glimpse of what it could be like if it was a real engine. The procedure to do this is that you have to have someone pull the little toggle underneath the steering wheel, while someone else at the front gives it a little tweak to lift it up, um, otherwise it doesn't open properly. And then it's just a, a slide pull and... Oh, good God, there's a lot of heat coming off of that. It's because it's a hot day, ladies and gentlemen, no, no other reason. So this is a three litre V6 bi-turbo, delivers 510 brake horsepower and propels this 1600 kilogram car to 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds. And as you can see here, carbon fibre hood or bonnet. Very nice. Uh, right, so rear room for um, a reasonable medium sized adult, uh, pretty good actually. Uh, you've got lots of headroom here. This seat is a long way back and I've still got plenty of knee room. Uh, yeah, I think you'd be very comfortable sitting here. One thing this car doesn't have, the Quadrifoglio over the normal Julia, is that the rear seats don't fold down. So your boot space is limited to what you have back there. You can't extend it other than that. Uh, another interesting point about this car, it has the comfort seats in it, not the carbon backed jobbies, which makes them more comfortable because they're much more adjustable um, and really if you're buying it for a family car you don't really want your kids kicking the carbon on the back of the seats do you no you get out of the car and you think right i need to go somewhere so i'm going to lock it and you go oh where's the touch sensitive door handles where are they uh no you have a little witch's walt on the side of your door handle which you have to give a little touch to and then you can lock your vehicle thanks alpha Twenty-one model year. Yeah, brand new. Brand new. So all of the we're going to call them niggles. <laughs> That's putting it uh, mildly. Double O seven have been worked out, mm. and now you've got a complete package. So in theory, the car that we're driving today in this beautiful blue colour is perfect. You never buy the first run of the Porsches. You always buy the last run. Mm -hmm. Same for Alfa Romeos. And remember, this car has won all the awards all of them literally all of them i think the what car you know stupid bastard fast sports saloon of the year yeah. it's won it like three years in a row yeah absolutely it's even more pertinent now with the introduction and the sale of the new m3 m4 yep you've got to you've seriously got to be considering this if you're going out and buying an m3 or m4 and you haven't driven one of these then frankly you need your head checking. Mm. Because just look at this thing. I look know. at it. I know. Oh. Look at it. The exterior styling is still amazing. It's got all the bumps in the right places. It hasn't got a stupid nose on it like Daniela Westbrook's been on a party night. The interior is lovely as well, isn't it? I don't think, I'm not blown away by it, but there's a nice swathe of carbon fibre all over the place. A bit too much of this plain black plastic for me though. We've got all the flash bits down here for dynamic control and Ferrari device soft suspension setting for the dampers and I mean are we prepared to say that this is essentially a Ferrari engine in this or is that like crossing a boundary of someone well it depends whether or not you want to be able to buy new Ferraris ever again I suppose I mean I'm pretty sure you can say that can you mm. well in which case yeah so we were driving a Ferrari engined Alfa, Alfa Romeo. Romeo yeah and what could be cooler than that the very latest very absolutely nice. looks incredible oh. from the outside a little bit of carbon here and there clover leaf on Everywhere. the front oh it's good lots of vents lots of bulges it's very purposeful pretty car <laughs> and i'm loving the fact that this is in blue yeah not the obvious red. Not the obvious red. And you can, this car hasn't got it, but you can now get it with a carbon fibre roof, which... Oh yeah, that's right. 
does actually look very good. I think I would. I think I would have the car. Yeah, you think you would? Wouldn't yeah, you? yeah, definitely. And look how quiet it is to drive. You'd never know this was a 500 horsepower monster, would you? Now, interestingly, this is paddle shift only in the UK market, but you can get a manual one in Europe. Can you? Yeah. Oh. Now, you see, I don't mind this gearbox. Um, it is meant to be much improved, actually. It's good. It's not seamless can be a little bit lazy on the downs i think if you could have this in a manual you've basically got the perfect car now could i just point out that i was a bit disappointed with the exhaust noise out the back when you started it up it doesn't sound brilliant it sounds it? very quiet quite disappointing i thought it was going to literally blow my Whoa. head off and, and it didn't at all it kind of sounds a bit like a ford mondeo so i'm hoping that when we obviously give it the beans that we're going to really get some it, proper noise it out of this does thing. get a bit more throaty it's got the italian steering and what i mean by that is it's very light knocks, steering. knocks off early knocks off early smokes loads of cigarettes <laughs> it's very light oh I wouldn't... Whoa. Whoa, whoa, emergency stop, look at that. Well, there you go. I don't think we need to do a brake test then. No, I think we've uh, I think we've done that. So the driving modes are controlled by the Alpha Chassis Domain Control. Mm. We've got a race mode, which basically gives you a loud exhaust. Yep. We've got the dynamic mode, which increases which the brake in. and steering sensitivity. You've then and got the natural mode, which is essentially comfort. Yep. And then you've got advanced, which is the sort of super eco mode that puts the cylinder at deactivation in. So if you really want to eke out the miles on the petrol. Oh, I've now got a little light on the dashboard that says the collision detection system is off. Okay, that's good. But we never had collision detection systems when I learned to drive. They were your eyes. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yes, a combination of your hands, feet and eyes. <laughs> So we're in race mode. Here we go. We've got a little oh, bit more. We're literally at death's door. We're just about to tweak the nipples of the Grim Reaper. We are. Let us beans now, Shall please. we beans? We yes. have a national speed limit. Here we are. 20. Ready? Yep. Still not very loud, but could you feel the lack of traction? I didn't see you fighting the wheel though. Oh, no, so is it quite uh, controllable? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you can. You, these tyres, they've got this uh, running those coarser nonsense things, which oh, are. And it's a hot day. And it's a hot day. So very sticky at the back. They've already yeah. been pre warmed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't didn't sense any breakaway, but there definitely was a little bit of scrabbling there. It didn't feel that fast to me, I have to say. Now, whether that's because I've driven here in a Ferrari. <laughs> I'm not you funny. Maybe. You just got out of a 700 horsepower pista. Yeah, I think I might have ruined myself. I think you've ruined yourself. Yeah, so it didn't, didn't feel that fast, and the, and the noise was definitely a lot more muted. muted. The car we tested in 2017 was, louder. was a lot louder. It could do with an Akrapovic. Akrapovic. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't it? And I didn't think that would ever be the case with this, because I did feel that, it, yeah, of all the things that were wrong with it before, the it noise was point, wasn't, one of them. wasn't one of them, no. This is a bit of a shame that I think the Euro bandits have got in and robbed this yeah. of all that passion. Look at the look at the lights in the centre. It tells you when to shift. It's got a big shift light. Watch. Okay. Oh, yeah. It literally says shift. It does. Shift. Shift! Shift! <laughs> <laughs> Shift! Shift! I mean, it is shifting, isn't it? I mean, that's 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 not slow. There's some shifting. That's, yeah, that's, that's not to sixty. Do you remember what this is? It's about six, isn't it? No, three point nine. Is it? 3.9 not 60. It doesn't yeah, yeah. feel that fast, does it? It doesn't, but then we weren't going from first, we were in second. This is true. So maybe there's some kind of special magic, or perhaps it doesn't change up until 62 from first gear. Ah. Might, might do that. In the press release for the car, yeah. it says that the top speed's 176 miles an hour. Is it? But in the specifications on the website, it says it's 191. Oh. So I don't really know what the top speed of this car is. 
because they contradict each other. More, more than your need. Well, it's more likely to be 176 because I can't imagine this getting to, to 191. But it said that the top speed is 307 kilometers an hour. Wow. Yeah. So I suspect maybe an error there. Peak torque? Um, around 500, isn't it? 442. Yeah. Oh, so actually, a, bit a little bit less. Yeah, 600 newton meters. You were highlighting specifically that you felt it was very controlled when you were blasting mm. away. There wasn't. You weren't really losing it. Mm. And do you know why that is? Uh, is it got some sophisticated differential? Two words: torque vectoring. Oh. Well, it's, that would make sense because you can feel the tires kind of. Your fight. Your when you drive it, you'll see. You can actually feel them grabbing on each side. Yeah, I mean it's got two mechanical kind of clutches almost on the rear wheels only and that's helping you basically maintain traction and it's helping to balance that torque as you floor it. And I thought it was just because I was a wicked wheel man. It's also, I think it rides well because we've got double wishbones at the front mm. but at the back we've basically got a vertical rod using some kind of special Alfa Romeo technology which is all very secret. And we've got 50-50 weight distribution, so it's a very well-balanced car. It turns in lovely. Um, it really is quite pointy. Do you want to know also something else special about this car? Go on then. I didn't know this. Blow me away. It has an active aero splitter. Ooh! So above 60 miles an hour, you get things open up to improve the airflow and help you stay stuck on the road. This is very sophisticated for Alfa Romeo. It is. Let's see exactly how composed it is. Using all that technology. So front active aero splitter, torque vectoring, 50-50 weight distribution, all of it combining, double wishbones. It's just the suspension on here is really good. Yeah, it's a joy, isn't it? It really is. It gives you so much confidence because you know that all four wheels are actually touching the tarmac all the time. Lovely tight right here. Very nice. Look at that. Cheeky. I am sensing quite a lot of weight though. I mean, yeah, it's quite heavy. Yeah, I mean, it's... whether it's because you've got the soft suspension sort of setting on there, but it to me it feels like the tyres are, are sort of working, working pretty hard up. there. I mean, this is Probably, I think with fluids, this is what, 1,600 kilograms, 1,650? Oh, at least that, I would have thought. Yeah, I think it's like 1,540 dry. With us in here, it must be 1,780. <laughs> <laughs> with our Covey stones. Yeah, yeah, 1,650, then I get in it. <laughs> you know, it's nearing two tonnes. <laughs> I think it's time for you to reacquaint yourself with the majesty that is the Alfa Romeo Quadrifoglio. What do you think? I think you may be right. It's time for a driver swap. <laughs> Through the magic of cinema, I am now in the driver's seat. Ta -da! Comes alive though, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm loving the feel of those paddles. They're really cool metal, aren't they? Nice. If they had a bit of a click to them as well, they would be perfect. They are lacking the click, aren't they? they? Are. Yeah. I mean, you just jump in it and drive immediately full throttle, don't you? Yes. Yeah. No intimidation whatsoever. Gives you a load of confidence, this car. You can properly hustle it without fear of it spitting you off into the scenery. The steering's really good size, it's got way too many bits and buttons on it for my liking. I'll definitely yeah. get rid of that, and especially as most of them are just turning off Nanny State 8s. That's <laughs> the only reason that button's there, is to turn that off. Yeah. Off, 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 off. I don't think it sold in the numbers they thought it was going to sell in. Though. No, there's always going to be that inherent prejudice, which in this case is completely unfounded. This yeah. is every bit as good as the best of the Germans at the moment. And that's partly because the Germans have got a bit crapper. <laughs> yeah. But also agreed. mainly because Alfa Romeo has properly stepped up. Yeah, this, this is a really good, sorted, grown-up car. very refined. I mean, I have to say, I've not driven the latest M3 or M4, no. but I think I would say, without hesitation, 
that I would have one of these. Yeah, I, I would have one just because it, it's a little bit different. That's what I like about it. It looks the part. Yeah. And it drives the part as well. Yeah. I'm really impressed with this, and I'm so glad that it's as good as it was when we drove it first in 2017. So what do you like about this car? Um, I love the way it looks. I love its subtleness. I love that it's kind of got this very normal attitude when you're driving it around town and it can be turned into a complete monster with a couple of switches of buttons. What do you not like about it? I'm not really sensing a lot actually. It just does everything perfectly. It really does. It, shockingly so. I mean, I, it's an alpha so you'd expect at least one wheel would have come off by now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is a bit thirsty, I will say that. Oh yeah, that's that, the thing, That twin it? turbo V6 is a bit thirsty. Yeah, that's because you're caning it all the time. Uh, yeah, well you can't help yourself though, can you? Let's be honest. So really, in conclusion, for the Quadrifoglio, it's, it is as good as they say. It, it is fantastic. Is absolutely blinding. Everyone in their right mind should basically drop what you're doing right now, right now. and go out and buy one of these. Thanks very much for watching this episode of The Car Guys. We hope you enjoy this review of the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. We absolutely love this car and we implore you to go out and buy more of them so that in a couple of years time, they're really cheap for us. If you like what we're doing on The Car Guys, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. Don't forget to check out our Instagram account, Facebook as well, our website where you can buy lots of our lovely merch. And there'll be another episode of The Car Guys along next week.